In 1968, at the height of the air war over Vietnam, U.S. losses were steadily increasing due to a small, yet highly trained group of MiG fighters that were intent on clearing American aircraft from the skies. Though generally seen as technologically inferior to American jets of the era, MiG-21s and MiG-17s were inflicting devastating losses against American air power. These smaller, more nimble aircraft from the Soviet Union were destroying heavier, less agile American planes such as the F-105 Thunder Chief and even, to a point, the vaunted F-4 Phantom II and Mass. Around this time, the North Vietnamese only had between 150 and 180 MiG fighters of all types, with few of them being the relatively advanced MiG-21, whereas the Americans had well over 450 aircraft operating in the area from aircraft carriers alone, with a large portion of these being the F-4 Phantom II. Despite the numerical inferiority of the North Vietnamese air forces, they still managed to put up a tenacious fight, being largely on the defensive and relying on hit-and-run tactics throughout the war. This caused the loss of 14 F-105s in December 1966 to MiG-21s alone, during which time not a single MiG-21 was lost. Through several operations such as Operation Bolo, which was a surprise attack undertaken by the U.S. and led by Colonel Robin Olds, were successful. The U.S. desperately needed a MiG of their own to study in order to gain an advantage over them. As luck would have it, just such a thing would happen, as the U.S. would soon be able to fly both the MiG-21 and MiG-17 in friendly skies, of which, they hoped, would turn to a huge advantage in the air war over Vietnam. This is the story of Have Donut and Have Drill, the operations that forever changed American fighter tactics and magnified the U.S. advantage in the skies over Vietnam. During the 1960s, the Middle East was a hotbed of tension, much like it is today, and as it still is today, much of that tension was focused around Israel. As such, Israel had a very powerful intelligence network named Mossad that, much like the US's CIA, was, and still is, involved in major espionage efforts. One of these efforts was the attempted procurement of a MiG-21 from an enemy state of Israel. This was in large part due to the fact that most, if not all, surrounding hostile states were either equipped with or were in the process of becoming equipped with MiG-21s, and, as a result, Israel needed one in order to test their strengths and weaknesses and to formulate tactics for how to defeat them. Through much work in the early 1960s, and under the codename Operation Diamond, Mossad eventually found a potential defector in the Iraqi Air Force's Captain Munir Redfa, of whom had grown disillusioned with the Iraqi Air Force's treatment that he had received due to his Christian religion. With Israel's promise to secure Captain Redfa's family a $1 million prize, Israeli citizenship, and full-time employment, Captain Redfa made his fateful flight to bring the MiG-21 to Israel. On August 16, 1966, Captain Redfa was flying a routine training mission with his MiG-21. Due to his Christian religion, his superiors were oftentimes distrustful of him and, as such, limited the fuel that he had at any one time on his plane. As a result, when he finally touched down in Israel, he remarked that he was on his last drop of fuel. Shortly after the captain's defection, in April of 1967, an engagement between Syrian Air Force MiG-21s and Israeli Mirage 3s occurred over Golan Heights, which resulted in the downing of six Syrian MiG-21s against a loss of zero Mirages. This success came only months after the conclusion of Operation Diamond and, can in large part, be attributed to the testing of the MiG-21 and the knowledge gained from it. Once Israel had thoroughly studied its prized MiG-21, they handed it over to the U.S. in January of 1968, starting the Have Donut program, with the intention of the U.S. to do just as Israel had done the months prior, hoping to replicate Israel's success but over the skies of Vietnam. As a result of the transfer of the MiG-21 to the U.S., Israeli-American relations improved and thus opened the door for the sale of U.S. F-4 Phantoms to Israel, which had been an issue for a while. Following the transfer of the MiG-21 fish bed to the U.S., testing of the plane occurred over Area 51 in Nevada due to its remote location which reduced the chance of anyone seeing the MiG over American skies. While not in the air, the MiG-21 spent most, if not all of its time, in the hangars in order to prevent Soviet satellites from taking pictures of it. 
During its time in the US, it was redesignated as the YF-110. The program was named Have Donut for the donut shape of the F-4 Phantom's aiming radical. The goal of the testing of the MiG-21 was to improve knowledge of the plane and to learn its strengths and weaknesses. In this regard, it was much akin to the Akatan Zero, which provided invaluable information that saved many American lives in World War II due to the procurement and testing of an intact Japanese Zero fighter. Much the same with the Akatan Zero, the Have Donut MiG-21 heavily influenced tactics and pilot education, but, unlike the Zero, did not strongly influence following aviation designs. This said, it was put through a battery of tests which exposed its many weaknesses, such as poor performance under 15,000 feet, where the MiG-21 could not go supersonic. This fact was previously unknown to the Americans. Further, it was found that, due to the less advanced technology of the Soviet Union, the Fishbed's engines would take upwards of 14 seconds to fully spool up, which led to poor acceleration. During this time, the MiG could have engine hang-ups, compressor stall, or overheating issues. Additionally, it was found that, in high-G turns, especially below 15,000 feet, the MiG-21 would bleed excessive amounts of energy, leading to a sharp loss in speed over a short period of time. With these weaknesses in mind, the US Navy began to adjust tactics when flying into North Vietnam, such as beginning to approach targets at upwards of 630 miles per hour and disengaging at speeds of over 700 miles per hour, which would make it difficult, if not impossible, for the MiGs to properly intercept. Shortly after the procurement and testing of the Have Donut MiG-21, the Americans would come into possession of another trophy of great importance, Polish-built MiG-17 in what would eventually become known as Have Drill. In much the same way as the MiG-21 was captured, the MiG-17 landed in Israel. Unlike Operation Diamond, however, which was a planned defection, the MiG-17 was a surprise in that a Syrian pilot mistakenly landed in Israel after confusing it for Lebanon. This coincidentally occurred in 1968, right when the US had been given access to Israel's prized MiG-21. Later that year, Israel once again cooperated with the US by sending the MiG-17 stateside, thus commencing HAV drill. In much the same way as had been done with the MiG-21, American aviators began relentlessly testing the MiG-17, attempting to find its strengths and weaknesses. The HAV drill MiG-17 went by the designation YF-113A and was a Polish-built model which would otherwise be known as a LIM-5. During this testing, a few Navy pilots were brought to Nellis Air Force Base on an invite-only pass to perform flights against the MiG-17, of which was stationed nearby at Area 51 along with the MiG-21. No Navy pilot defeated the MiG-17 in their first simulated dogfight against this type, largely owing to the great maneuverability of the design, despite being older, slower, and with outdated weaponry. During the time of these simulated dogfights, as well as other tests involving the two MiGs, no pilot stationed at Nellis Air Force Base located just to the south of Area 51 were to know that the U.S. even had MiGs in their possession. As a result, whenever either of these planes were airborne, a large portion of the airspace would be closed in that area, becoming known as the Red Square, due to the fact that the forbidden airspace was a square marked in red on reference maps. These flights were so secret that documents pertaining to them were only declassified in 2013, nearly half a century after they initially occurred. Following these initial flights and with all the data gathered, the Navy established a Top Gun program under the United States Navy Fighter Weapons School name on March 3, 1969 in order to revolutionize fighter pilot training. This had a nearly immediate impact as, when major bombing campaigns against North Vietnam resumed in 1970, the U.S. Navy saw their success rate with F-4s increase from 2.75 aerial kills per one loss of the F-4 Phantom to 8.33 kills for every one loss, though some sources claim 12.5 kills per one loss for the Navy following the creation of their new pilot training school. Alternatively, the U.S. Air Force did not seek as radical a solution as the Navy, but did still benefit from the knowledge gained from the captured MiGs and, as such, also benefited from a better win ratio, albeit to a much lesser extent. Initially, however, they actually saw a slight decrease in performance against MiGs, but ended the war with a slightly better performance than they had before the HAV programs. 
The Air Force's lackluster results, as opposed to the Navy's stellar results, is likely the result of not enacting an updated training program that would not only make their pilots more elite, but would also help to educate on the deficiencies discovered in the MiGs that participated in the HAV programs. This failure to educate their pilots cost them dearly, while the Navy, taking a much more proactive approach, benefited greatly. Years following the conclusion of the Vietnam War, the U.S. created the 4477th Test and Evaluation Squadron which specialized in testing foreign-made aircraft with an emphasis on planes originating in the USSR. They did not exist until 1980, but still flew MiG-17s, MiG-21s, and MiG-23s. The Hav Donut and Hav Drill MiGs were incorporated into the 4477th fleet, which, along with MiG-23s, had at one point a total of 26 planes under their control. The 4477th operated under a military project named Constant Pay, and with their help in finding the flaws of Soviet aircraft, as well as with the training of pilots and how to defeat them, the 4477th greatly assisted in Operation Desert Storm, in which American fighter aircraft downed upwards of 40 Iraqi MiGs of all types. Though the 4477th no longer exists, itself being a spin-off of the HAV programs, it lives on in the 422nd Test and Evaluation Squadron, of which is believed to be in possession of highly prized Russian fighters like the MiG-29 and Sukhoi-27, but also possibly of much more advanced aircraft. Through this work, the U.S. is ensuring that they will have a force to be reckoned with for many years to come.